Let's see. Okay. Um, for, for the recording that missed it, I've encouraged you to um, turn on your camera if you have one because um, we're trying to build community and it helps to see other humans. Um, it makes us feel better. And um, it's nice to associate a face with a name, right? Um, and the other point was if you don't have a camera, um, send me an email it, to let me know and um, we'll, we'll see what we can do about that because this online stuff, it's not going away. Um, the other expectation is that you speak up. Uh, yeah, we'll have presentations, we'll have some guests come join us in these meetings, but this group is for you. It's for your needs and your discussion. That's what we're here for. Um, so what, what we're gonna get to today, I've made all these little notes for myself, um, is I, I'm in a, in a couple minutes, I'm gonna ask you what are some of the things that you wanna talk about, that you wanna hear about, um, not just today, but over the course of um, this group developing and working together. Um, we'll go ahead and make a list now and um, address those you know day one things uh first in our in our upcoming meetings um but other things are going to come up right as we get more comfortable with each other and with the format and that's great that's part of discussion that's part of growing um as i'm setting up niche academy which we keep throwing that word out and you haven't seen anything um but as i'm setting that up i'm putting in uh, little discussion modules um, for the different interest groups. And so it's my hope that um, as y'all get registered in Niche, you'll be able to use that as another way to connect with each other um, in between our meetings. Maybe some things will come um, from that. I know that, um, you know, part, part of the problem, uh, not really a problem, but part of the reality Right, the reality of um, <laughs> being in a library in Southeast Kansas is not only are you maybe solo, but your library is not near any of the other ones where folks are solo. And so that, you know, that's why we're here. Um, and I just really hope that um, this, you know, this the, these connections can grow and, um, uh, help you help you feel good, help you do your job, help you feel confident um, in providing library services to your community. So um, let's get the ball rolling. If you want, um, do, do you guys want to introduce yourselves first or do you um, feel like you know each other already? Anybody? No? I'll introduce me. I didn't do that. Um, you've probably seen me in some meetings. <laughs> My name's Amy. I'm your consultant here at SEK. Um, I've met some of you. I haven't met all of you, um, but I know you've gotten emails from me. Um, I am looking forward to meeting all of you between COVID and winter. It's, you know, it's, it's been a thing. Uh, but but we will get to all of you. Um, and I'm glad to have you here in this group today and hopefully in the future. Um, let's just start from the, on my screen, it's the um, top left. Monica at Coffee County, are you there? She might be. I'm gonna move on to the next one. Monica, when you come back, just, you know, come on in. Um, Sharon, tell us about you. <laughs> I had changed my name. So um, I'm not S-E-K-L-S, S-E-K-L-S. My name is Sharon Moreland. I'm the new director of the Southeast Kansas Library System. Um, and one definition of a solo librarian is to, um, I was the I was the only person at my library in Tonganoxie that had a library degree, 
Um, so I did have staff, I had a staff of two, but um, yeah, so I've, I've been a definition of a solo librarian um, and I've been at a, a relatively small library. So I, um, I feel some of that pain that you guys are feeling, but I'm, we hope to be here also for those of you that are truly, you know, like Kathy, it's you, <laughs> you're everything. Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a lot involved in being a library director. So, you know, figuring out how much you can do it before you burn out and crash in a firing flame is, is important. And so um, I'm hoping that you guys end this, you know, after six months and you have a cohort, you know, you have your peeps. So that's another part of this that we're hoping to, to build community. Thanks, Sharon. Christine, you're next on my screen. All right, my name is Christine. I've met some of you through different groups, um, but I'm at the Madison Library. I started at the end of last April, so it's coming up on a year. Um, it is just me in here. I have a high school girl that comes in 30 minutes a day for a school project, basically. Um, and we did just hire two part-time high school girls for like every other Saturday kind of thing. So that's exciting. Um, but yeah, mostly it's just me in here. I I like that getting to do all the different things, but it is overwhelming because I want to be perfect at all of it and I can't be. So <laughs> anyway, learning curve for sure. But that's that's really hard. I'm I'm a perfectionist myself. And Sharon and I have talked about this a lot, you know, as as we want to make everything the best it can be. But there's a a, a quote and a variation on a quote that's like perfection is the enemy of good. Yes. or perfection is the enemy of progress so you know i'm you know yep <laughs> preaching to I the fire and also yesterday so, yeah. but. how good is good enough right you know right some things some things yes you need to have perfect other things yeah that's good enough let's yep. move on thank you christine yeah deanne tell us about you Hello, I'm Deanne, and I am the new director for Galena. Um, I started pretty much in July because I was doing summer school at my school that I'd worked at. Um, I am mostly solo. I do have two high school students that work maybe 10 to 12 hours a week. Um, my library is still a disaster. I'm not going to lie. It looks like a hoarder lives there. When I started that position, I walked into a building with nothing in it except boxes of books. Um, probably at least 75% of those were not cataloged. Um, but anyway, I'm still cataloging. That's pretty much what I do every day. Um, and I just, I can't find time to do anything right now. So that's what I'm hoping this group will help me prioritize my time. My library is open 39 hours a week. And so by the time I get there, my phone starts ringing, people start coming in. I can't get anything done. So anyway, I'm excited about this. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, I, it's, it's hard. It, it can be hard to prioritize when everything feels urgent, right? All of the things need to be done. So, so I can't get any of it done, but you are getting so much done. We're really proud of you, Dan. Uh, she, that library has come a long way, y'all. It's like she said, it was just boxes of books before. And now it's, you know, they're on shelves. There are humans there. Um, we're we're so very excited for I have, you. I have a question for the group. How many of you have administrative time? So time that you're there and paid, but you're closed to the public. So Jenny mm -hmm. and Deanne, that might be something you consider because that's when you can get your bookkeeping done, your cataloging done, your catching up on stuff, yes? Yes. Um, how would I do that though? I mean, do I just tell my board that I'm changing my hours? Well, you coordinate it with them, but yeah. Okay. Let them know that there's yeah. a need that, you know, okay. maybe, maybe I think um, at Tonganoxie, we, we opened late on Thursday, or we stayed open late on Thursday and we opened to the public a little bit later and I came okay. in at a regular time and I had that a couple of hours okay. to get work done. That's what we did. We had to adjust our open hours and just I come in an hour early in the morning before we open and it works really nice. Right. Good idea. Jenny, tell us about you. Um, 
Um, I've been at Prescott for 12 years. Um, you'd think I'd have my shit together, but I don't. Um, I, I, I'm really having a hard Same, time. honestly. I mean, <laughs> well, I, summer reading is killing me. I, I can't find the time to put into it that, that we need to make a nice program. And I just, I, yeah, I'm a little stressed trying to, I do have three people that help me. They're older ladies, but they mess up so much. I spend my days working, trying to clean everything up. Yeah. And, and I was working every day and that made things easier. Just do it myself. And, but I was trying to retire and take some time off, but <laughs> yeah, you guys know what I mean. <laughs> Kathy, I see you laughing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, so another question. How many of you have a scaled down summer reading? So, you know, instead of three months, you do it for six weeks. We try for eight weeks. Yeah. We've cut down to eight weeks also. Yeah. So, you know, that's... Um, and, in, and that's sort of a national trend. There's been so much time, effort, and money that gets plugged into summer reading sort of at the expense of the other nine months of the year. Um, you know, so it's, there's nothing wrong with having an abbreviated summer reading. Um, it still sure. serves that purpose. We used to only have four weeks before I took the job. And with so many kids having, you know, two sets of parents and vacations and stuff, they were only getting to come twice. So we lengthened it to eight. So that's extended for us. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, and I remember I always had to deal with like, when is VBS? So that was at least yes. two weeks in the middle of the summer that I got nobody because, uh, yeah. So I made sure no, I didn't, I was not paying for any programs during VBS week. And it was like, yeah, we'll get half the people. And Bonnie says in the chat that they do four weeks as okay. well. All right. Sorry, I keep interrupting your. Uh, no, it's good. <laughs> keep interrupting, Sharon. Uh, hey, Kathy, tell us about you. All right. I've been a director for 12 years. I'm trying to find a person who can follow me. And it's, it's hard. It's like giving up your child. Yeah. Um, before those 12 years, I was a trustee for forever. I, I took the one year off that the state requires, but I've been a trustee. So I've been with this little library a long time. Um, my struggles are, we're only open 14 hours a week. I do have substitutes and they tend to work Saturdays, but like I'll be working this Saturday because it's the end of the month and I am behind. But um, if I don't let them work, then they don't keep up their job skills, but it just yeah. limits my time on the job even more. But I'm so thankful to have a substitute. Okay, another question. Um, have in, in SEK, do libraries ever share subs? <laughs> do you have to make it the same face I am like, Oh, yeah, yes. you know, I, with proximity, you know, that and if, if, yeah, if you're all if you're on seek and find you're on seek and find so they would know the right know the thing. Okay. So I, yeah, I just wondered about that. that, was, that <laughs> when I worked at Kansas City Public, that was one of my jobs. I was in charge of all the substitutes. So, okay. That might be something to explore. I can't imagine the logistics of it at at yeah. this point, um, but. You have that, a list of people who might be interested and you, it's like an on-call list and then you can reach out to them. I mean, how, do you guys have uh, board members that no. are active substitutes? Okay, I know some do, like I think Chicago mm -hmm. does, but. There, yeah. Yeah. There's too much training to do for a sporadic board member. Yeah. yeah. But if we had it, you know, like. <laughs> A substitute per county, I even maybe. 
Okay, it's worth. I I just wonder. Maybe I'll pursue that in my retirement, Karen. There you go. <laughs> you I just can't why? get away. Roger, do you want to be a sub? <laughs> You know, that's the problem with uh, a sub in general, uh, hiring someone from public, not within, of uh, when you're a small library and you usually don't even take sick days or have vacation days or what have you, but um, you put all, finally find someone, you put all the time and training in them, and they also have to know Koha, you know, not only that, but all the other uh, things there is to learn about a library because most of them have never even realized they think you sit at a desk and wait for someone to come in and say hi and bye uh, as they leave and there's a little more than that being a librarian as we all know but anyway putting in all the time and money into training them and then they it's like oh well I'm only going to be working five days a year well I I need more employment than that or Oh, we're traveling during that time because they're usually a retired person that you end up finding. And um, we just quit even looking for subs because we were just putting money into nothing. <laughs> well, you know, and I, in my mind, I'm like, well, isn't that a system service? Isn't that something we, you know, where we could be the ones to help put in the time and money for the training, I don't know. It's I, I it's an idea. Maybe we can at least explore because I. It, it sounds like it's something that several of you would would need, um, especially if we ever get back to in person training. I've had people think it's not a real job. It's just fun, you know. And and if I'm late, no big deal. And if I leave early, no big deal. They don't take it serious that this is a real business. And. I, that's the mentality I'm dealing with too around here. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's that's also often the case with volunteers, and I, I do I will not disparage volunteers. I'm grateful for them, um, but sometimes there is the the mentality that um, the whole thing is voluntary, right? My presence there is voluntary. Well, no, if you've you know if you've signed up and you're committed to being there on this day at this time, right? We are accepting your, your volunteer labor during that time and relying on you. So yeah, there's, it's- Okay, uh, I'm done, sorry. You unfortunately to, not unique. <laughs> you also have to train all the volunteer. You also have yes. to train all the volunteers and uh, they usually don't take that seriously either. And while you're trying to, train them a little more in depth, even how to write down a barcode. Um, if they can't run the system, um, you spend two days after they leave correcting everything they did. That's so therefore, said, yep. therefore um, you know, and that's usually on your own time, not on library time that you're doing all the corrections. Yeah, it's not helpful if, <laughs> if there's a duplication of labor, yeah. Uh, Lee, tell us about you. Maybe. No. There you are. Oh, okay. Lee, you're not on mute, but we can't hear anything from you. Figure it out. I'm going to go to Bonnie. Bonnie, tell us about you. Michelle's here with me also. We Hi, both, Michelle. Uh, we've both worked for three and a half years. They hired us and we are now a package deal. They can't separate us. <laughs> um, our library is open 930 to 6, Monday through Friday, and we share those hours, so we're both part-time. Um, Something I wanted to share is besides working on the summer reading program, Michelle and I are also working on activities for the Big Kansas Road Trip, which is happening in May. So if anybody's free the first weekend of May, be sure to come visit us. We're gonna have activities with the coal mining. Uh, where is the, 
home of the fly swatter. It's where it was invented. We're going to have all kinds of family oriented activities and treats and giveaways. So be, beyond summer reading, we're knee deep in that also. Thank you for mentioning that. I, I That had dropped off my radar and it was something that was happening in Northeast Kansas when I was up there and I thought it was kind of fun and exciting. And I think it's Marcy Penner's involved, didn't she? The yes. one, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so I'm happy to hear you guys are, are doing that. Are you gonna use your outdoor space? Yes, yes. With our ARPA grant, we got an outdoor programming area. Uh, the benches are of course out there and set, but we got canopies, tables, chairs, Perfect. rolling carts, sand table. We'll have all kinds of activities. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a good time, I'm sure. Weir Library is also like a visitor center. So anybody that needs maps, brochures, anything of that sort, they'll be coming here also. So we expect, and fingers crossed, to have a lot of people through that weekend. Bonnie, are you yes. guys connected um, as part of that committee and part of that getting ready for that? Are there other libraries along that route? Because it's the three bottom counties of the yeah, state, it's right? Cherokee, Crawford, and uh, Bourbon. So you would have Fort Scott, oh. Arma, Pittsburgh, McCune. Bronson, aren't you in Bourbon? Uh, to be Yes, uh, Bronson is Bourbon. We are the second largest library in Bourbon County. Yes, you are. <laughs> It'd be There's Baxter, that. Galena, Columbus, us. Uh, so yeah, there'll be a lot of libraries that can be visited that weekend. Okay. I was going to say, because we've got Galena and we've got uh, Diane from Bronson. So that's at least uh, two more. Um, did you say Gerard too? Isn't it in Crawford? Yes, and Pittsburgh. Yeah. I mean, there's probably a good 10, McCune, yeah. And you guys are going to have a new one, Frontenac. Yes. Let's talk about that. Cool. That's exciting. Awesome. I, I really, I want to go and do that. Can we go and do that? Oh, yeah. Let's go and do that. Okay. It um, runs Thursday, Thursday through Sunday. The okay. First weekend. So there's four days you can hit. And there's a lot of cool things I've already seen. It's just, we're going to be stuck in weird. So we don't get to, but it's going to be a time for sure. Maybe, well, maybe we can do a travel log for you. It's very well promoted. So if, if the library is involved, it's just a great way. I mean, I'm happy to hear that you're going to be the um, visitor center because it's, you can't pay for that kind of public relations. That's really Absolutely. good publicity. <laughs> Oh, Diana, tell us about you. Okay. Well, I'm in my 22nd year and there's still something every day you learn, <laughs> for sure. <Yes. laughs> um, we are a uh, small library. I'm a solo librarian, um, no subs, minimal board. Uh, participation, let's say, <laughs> uh, which makes it even harder. Um, we, um, I st we still have to also think that we also have to wait on other libraries, not only ourselves being on career. So that takes time out of our day also, uh, which I, I wish that was my only job. I love doing that, uh, <laughs> pulling books and sending them out. <laughs> uh, but um, um, we are open 18 hours a week and um, which makes it kind of hard to get everything in. Uh, there's a lot of after hours done, if you know what I mean. Um, we are the only thing in our town. So I'm sure as all of you being small librarians, you want your library to really succeed and be the main hub of your community. So you work extra hard to do that. Uh, I don't know that everyone sees that or appreciates that, but I know that that's all of our thoughts and in our hearts. Um, well, I oversee all the library. I do all the planning, um, all the programming. I put on all the programs. Um, I do all the book reviews, all the purchasing, or the card cataloging. I prepare and conduct all the board meetings, uh, try to attend all 
of the education meetings uh, that I possibly can. Uh, I plan and perform all the summer reading. And um, I'm sure it's just what all of you do, but yeah, it, it's overwhelming. <laughs> well, and didn't you recently have a flood? Yes, we did. Um, we got the ARPA grant, which we're putting in a um, Life Skills Makerspace Center. Um, we also have some other things we've added along with that. And um, I had to move out all the library to make room for all this and rearrange. So did so, got it all back in and a wall of water pipe broke in the wall back in the janitor closet and flooded the building. So I had to move everything back out again, uh, me and my husband <laughs> and uh, got it all back and we're up and running. And um, that was an experience, but mm -hmm. yeah. And we've, we've got the Makerspace Center all set up and, um, we've also added a food pantry and, um, we're doing a blood pressure and, and, uh, a check center and, um, a, um, e-visit, uh, zoom, a center and different things like that. So it's taken a lot of planning and getting, and we've got the collection development grant going and, um, so I'm working on that part time as I'm getting all these other done. But now it's just a matter of starting to plan programs. That's impressive. Um, how's that food pantry coming? I was excited about that um, project. We um, had uh, Heartland donated two hundred and fifty dollars to us for seed money to get it started, and um, then we have. Um, the churches that in the area that have committed to donate to, although we haven't got that far yet of doing that, but our pantry is full at this moment. And now we're starting to advertise uh, to get it out to the public. Awesome. Oh, is anybody else starting a seed library? We're doing that also. Yeah. Seed library interest group is on Monday at 10. Is that right? Monday, Tuesday. I don't. Y'all, let me look at my calendar. Yeah, we're we're doing that in Iola. Let's. At Savenberg, we're gonna try like a seed plant swap one day, um, maybe in April, okay. and and see if there's interest before we invest a lot of time, my time okay. into it. Um, did you get the the La Harp is doing one, and I can send you the flyer if you didn't already get it. Um, they're doing a seed plant exchange that's just part of the community. Um, I mean, what we're for Iola, we're we're trying to keep it simple. We found this really beautiful old antique card catalog that's only like three by four, um, and it, the seeds fit in it perfectly. So we're just going to use that and try to keep it as simple as possible and have it be uh, something that volunteers can help with. Um, because I don't care if you mess up how you organize the seeds, they're going to get messed up after the first week anyway. So that's what we, we have some exchange, some high school exchange students that need volunteer hours, and that's what we're putting them on. That first meeting of the um, seed library interest group is this coming Monday, February 28th at 10 a.m. Okay. Um, if you can't make it, don't worry. I'm hoping <laughs> to remember to record it. Yep. And um, we'll send out notes to anybody who is uh, signed up for the mailing list for that. Okay. I'm going to come back around to Monica. Are you there? Okay. Nope. Uh, how about you, Lee? Okay, well, um, with the rest of our time or however much uh, time y'all wanna spend on it, um, bring up some of the stuff that you're hoping to um, talk about or learn from each other or um, stuff that you're kind of freaking out about, um, whatever you think will be helpful to you. I have a question for those of you that have high school students helping do you ever let them work 
solo or is are they just coming in and helping when an adult is working also? I don't let mine work solo. Um, neither one of mine have been trained on co-hall, so they really don't know how to how to handle check-ins or anything like that. Um, for the most part, mine shelf books, I'm, they put the um, spine labels on, the label protectors, and then they help me like with flyers for Facebook and things, just, just small things like that. Our high school girls, we actually hired them. So they will work on Saturday for three hours by themselves, but they're being trained and everything obviously, and they'll be on payroll. So, yeah. Well, just, just, I guess my concern is like, I mean, if I'm just concerned about leaving a young girl alone in, I mean, I, over half of my patrons are men. And a lot of time I'm just there with a man by myself. And I just, I don't know. I just question that. That was going to be my, my question is, is, are you on call? You know, if there's um, disgruntled, mentally unstable, I mean, it, 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 you know, um, yeah. so are you, you, you know, either you yeah. or somebody else is on call. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and that was, when I was at Tonganoxie, that was one of the things that um, we had an altercation where I had, and this was an adult woman with a spine who was there by herself and she had some dude get in her face and um, she didn't feel safe. And so we had to go to the city and say, we need to have two people and we need more money so I can, can hire more people. And for safety, we have to have two people. Do you guys have cameras at least or? other okay i mean i would consider it just i know we're in small towns but um safety and liability um, well that was going to be my question for you sharon do you know anything about um as far as liability whether this is potentially a well the 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 issue of whether or not somebody under 18 can be on a board has been discussed but not so much whether somebody under 18 can be a staff member. Um, I think because they're not they're not spending money and they're you know there's no fiduciary kind of um, responsibilities for an employee. They would be it'd be fine. Um, having a high school student be the person in charge. Are they like are we talking seniors or sophomores? <laughs> um, right. That's my be, concern. Is that the age versus being there alone uh whether there's a besides just our feeling of oh yeah that might be scary or icky is there any kind of um legal liability um potential consequence there well i'm i, I wrote that when you guys were talking about it i wrote down student employees because i think that that um that is an interesting an interesting point. Um, well, in our town, we would be, you know, we're a phone call away from a sheriff or deputy, and you know, it's it's at least twenty minutes before they get there. So it's it's not. I don't know. I guess yeah, if no. I was going to have a high school girl who knew how to run the desk, I would have a board member or somebody else there, volunteering. Well, and. How, you know, in the case of them, is is their family nearby? I mean, in some cases, it's you know the when when Rhonda would work by herself, her daughter would be there, or her son would come in, or you know her husband would stop by, or you know so that there was, um, they were sort of being watched over um, by guardian angels in the community, kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, so I'll look and see if there's any other kind of um, liabilities because I'm sure that that's something that you guys are all familiar with ARSL the Association of Small and Rural Libraries. I'll go there and look and see, because I'm sure that this we're, we're not alone in using mm -hmm. uh, underage or, or students for, for employees. Yeah, I, I might add that now that my husband's retired, he typically calls me once a day and says, how are things going? Or, you know, I call him when I leave, that type of thing. Just, now I guess, because he cares about me, but. <laughs> It does. That's exactly what it is. Okay. Even having this uh, security cameras, which we do have them inside and out, um, but 
nowadays, people that do things like that don't care if there's security cameras around, Yeah, you know, and like we are 30 minutes away from any uh, sheriff's department or anything that could come out. And and one time in the past when I have had to call, uh, we have had an unstable person in our community that was just going off and um, they, well, we'll talk to them when we're in town next. Well, that don't save me then. (laughs) So we used to have a a code with the city clerk, which is the next building over. And if I call up and say our code word, that means someone needs to come quickly. (laughs) That's That's a really, really, really good idea. That's a really good idea. Um, I mean, because, well, and I mean, and you get, you have city hall, but then you also have a local, there's the You've got local businesses across the street. So um, how about you, Christine? Don't you have the, I might be getting you confused with somebody else, but isn't your, isn't your firehouse catty corner from you? Oh, it's, I mean, it's a or street. around the corner. Up. Yeah, it's not far. It is just volunteer though. So uh, they're yeah, not so there all the time. If they're there. Yeah. Ours aren't open on Saturdays and they're not open uh, the late hours that I'm open. So, you know, in the evenings. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, safety is a, is a serious concern. So I, yeah, I would, I would recommend cameras. Even, I mean, this little, this thing that I have right here is $40 yeah. and it records. Turn it around, keep it on. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of you probably, like we have it, we take pictures of people for Koha. So that, that's just a camera. It can be used for multiple, multiple reasons. How about you, Jenny? You're in there by yourself sometimes, but you know everybody. I mean, that's the thing. You guys are in small communities, so you know everybody, right? For the most part. Yeah. One time I did have a problem years ago and I, I just snuck out. Two, two um, patrons are fighting. So I walk out and went over to the, um, the, fi- the firehouse, which was empty, and then used my cell phone to call the police, so. Yeah. Well, I mean, run, fight, hide, what was it? Run, run, hide, fight uh, is for pretty much lots of, not, not just active shooter. <laughs> if you're there by yourself. Yeah. One time. It was almost closing and I was, you know, by myself and I had a high school boy in there checking out a movie and I knew his mom. He he was an acquaintance of ours and some strange man walked in and started asking me questions and Jason just hung around. I mean, he was on his way out the door, but he just hung around, but um, I was glad he was there. Yeah. um... In the chat, uh, Monica has shared with us as well. She said code words are great. We do that with our central office staff. They know there is an issue up front and we need some backup. I used cohorts when I worked at the Red Cross and we had an arrangement with the business next door. So yeah, use those community connections that you're making um, to take care of each other, right? All in this together. Um, What else do y'all have? What will you want to talk about or hear about? I'd like to talk about just different programming ideas for small libraries with, you know, one person running all the programs, you know, just ways to make it not overwhelming and just different ideas. One thing my board let me do a few years ago because we were getting we were getting quite a, a good attendance at some programs. And I said, I got to have some help. So we hired a high school girl to um, help and just give me a second person. But um, mostly because of where we live, most kids have to have a ride to get the library and the moms are good. You got to be organized to and know which ones can do what, but that's helped the most. But now um, the last... Oh, I think, well, I don't know, counting COVID, probably four years. They allow my sub to work and run the desk and I do the programs. Because when you have that larger number of kids there, they want to check out a lot of stuff. And so 
Uh, we just budget for two people to be working and they're, and they're minimum wage. So it's not a large item, but the board recognized that. And then we just budget. That's part of summer reading. We have Lee in the chat. Uh, she says that she has a couple of high school girls that have been trained and they can be there alone. Um, and that the summer reading program, I'm about to sneeze. It left, uh, runs from May through the end of July. Um, both of the high school students want to major in library science. We've got some future librarians on our hands. Um, on the safety issues, Lee's been using code words for several years. Thank you for your input. Diane, when you're doing your, pro I mean, because you've listed several different programs that you're doing, plus you're going to have your makerspace. Do you just nobody can check out or or do you close the library during the time of the program so you don't have you know a senior come in and want to get their. Um, large prints while you're over in the corner doing story time. Uh, no, I uh, just have to pause go wait on the customer quickly and then go back and and uh, what have you now last summer, you know um, didn't expect a big turnout because of COVID, but it was our best summer ever. Yeah. Um, and they were in person. And uh, I did have one board member that came and just uh, stood with the kids while I had to, if I had to go attend. Okay, so another, you know, pop, these things pop in my head. We wanna do self-check at Iola. And I'm thinking for a small library, having a self, I mean, and Diane, I know you have sort of a modified self-check set yes. up if I remember right. Um, yes. But having a true self check where the person can come scan their own card, scan their items, print their slip and walk out. Um, is that something that would that, that would, would be, be helpful? That would be very helpful. But even with the modified that we have, in a small town, you don't even get people to bring their library card with them for one thing. Um, yeah. And you can't say, well, you can't check out because you don't have your card because you're drastically wanting that check out no matter what they have on them. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, and then just no matter what their age is, it's just like I get them to check the scan, but I have to be there monitoring it on the other side within, you know, distance on the other side. Um, I, I don't think they could handle checking in and out by themselves because you still have to monitor even with the half of what we're doing which is they they uh they can check out and check in but i'm on the other side looking on my computer screen to make sure everything got in and out correctly yeah because this... nine times out of ten they're scanning the wrong barcode and yeah or can't get the light to go on the barcode correctly and <laughs> yeah i mean I think it, it, they got it scanned and don't this is one of those cases where we were talking before, you know, how good is good enough? There's a certain level of, um, yeah, they might have a stack of six books and they get five of them checked out correctly. Um, is that good enough? Uh, so, but, uh, <laughs> and, okay, well, it's, uh, it's something that I want to test. I, I, I had self-check at several libraries uh, in the past um, and it was very popular but I have not played around with it with Koha. So I wanna see how it works. Um, and you can do it just like you have. I mean, you can do it with old equipment. Um, so, but I'll take, um, I'm glad to hear sort of the, people don't bring their cards. How do you manage that? In a small town, you have a binder, but <laughs> you know? can I look at, can I go get the binder that has my card number in it? Yeah, okay, there you go. Um, I, there might be ways to, to get around that, but um, okay, I just wondered, thank you. I think I would lose some patrons because mine come to visit. Well, yes. Anything, and in fact, a couple told me they won't come in except when I'm there. And I'm afraid if they were checking out their own things that they wouldn't feel the welcome or, you know, they might quit. Come well, I mean, and I'm not saying self-check and say, this is your only option. It's because you have, I find that you have people that are 50-50. You have the people that are coming in because they do want to talk to you. They want that communication. But then you have people like my friend, Mickey, who is very private. 
and it bothers him that um, he would have to go and somebody could see what he was checking out. Uh, and I and I had that in Pennsylvania. I had a couple of my patrons that were like, uh, I'm going to put my books on hold. They're going to be over here. I'm going to pick them up. I'm going to check them out. I'll wave at you as I go by, but uh, you don't need to know what I'm reading. So I think that you have both. That's what I, I'm curious if anybody wants to be a pilot project for me in one of the in, in a little solo library, uh, I'd love to to test it out. Just Sometimes we busy. fund pilot projects, just so you know. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting them to use the uh, seek and find catalog and ordering uh, placing holds on their own yes. in a small library also is a big deal. They, you know, and I'm more than happy to, to do it for them. Uh, but just that the service is there and they don't use it is. Yeah. We did a, um, for Iola, we did uh, strategic planning. And so I had a couple of people who live in, oh, Kathy, what's the name of it, Ellsmore? Yes. Yeah. So they live in Ellsmore, but they both of them lived in big cities and they have big city library expectations, mm. even though they live in Ellsmore. Uh, so I, I want to be mindful of that too. And I know that self-check is not something that, I don't know that there's, I mean, Independence has it, and Pittsburgh might have it, but other th I don't know. Coffee County, Monica, do you guys have self check? Maybe she'll come back. She's I know she's doing multiple things, but um, it's just something I'm interested in as a library service. So throw it out there. We have a few minutes left. If anybody else has some. Um, suggestions or ideas or um, gnawing questions uh, that you want to address in upcoming meetings. If you got any magic formula for like budgeting your time, because I find like I, if I'm planning and doing a program and then, you know, you've got this other week where you're busy doing reports and finances, and then you got the cataloging and the cleaning and it, it is just a real struggle to um, keep up. And um, also, I the, another struggle, and I don't know if you're aware of this, but you know, we're supposed to be paid for all these education things and uh, the meetings we go to and stuff. And that can be a burden on a small library budget too. Well, I, and I, that, I, I've brought this up um, before where, uh, the reporting requirements for some of the grants that we have, like for allocation, um, how onerous are, are some of the requirements, the, the busy work that um, SEK is requiring of you guys and how much time does it take um, to get all that done? Yeah, at what point does it become prohibitive? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the balance of reward well, I, and I got $250 labor. and it took me, you know, a day and a half to do this 47 report. hours. Mm. I get less than $30 for the state survey. <laughs> my my state allocation is 29 something. And I asked Roger one time, I said, it is, and then I, at that time I was getting about $80. I said, it is not worth it. He goes, then you won't get your SEK allocation. I said, okay, okay, it's worth it. <laughs> but it is, it is a lot work well and i think of anybody who could qual who could understand that it's alice because alice was at carbondale which is about the same size as savenberg um so i think it's something we should bring up to the state you know we are a a live uh, we're a state of very very small libraries um and maybe there needs to be a tiered response to that imls survey you know it's like if you're a large library yes answer all these stupid questions about ftes <laughs> <laughs> if I would, you're a little library, just, you know, what's your circ and how, how are you open? I would also add something that I think would be helpful for the new, newer librarians, because, you know, I've been at this long enough that I know kind of what to expect on the state report. So I've got a spreadsheet to keep track of this stuff all year. But, mm -hmm. you know, maybe having something like that to offer new people to say you need to track some of these things and you'll know why later um mm -hmm. 
And as I, and also as I'm thinking about somebody coming after me, I'm trying to streamline stuff and make sure that I'm, I'm doing stuff that makes sense to somebody else and not just to me. Um, anyway. Um, uh, it's super hot. Yeah. First year. Okay. Good to know. Um, how many people do monthly reports? Like, are you guys keeping track of your statistics monthly to share with your board? So then in December, you have all your statistics together. Yeah. Okay, good. Yes, we do. Yes. Good, good. I mean, that's important anyway, because it, it shows value and, it, and it's like, yeah, I think it's important to share that with your board. And so I work really hard to make sure that that monthly report feeds directly into, um, the state report. Mm -hmm. Cool, good. But yeah, but that might, if for, for those libraries that don't have that already set up, that could be something that we can, obviously you guys have it, so we can just share. Well, hi, Sharon. Welcome, Sharon. You almost didn't make it. Tell us about you. Everybody's been doing introductions. I'll, um, share the recording out later. Oh, did she leave? Cause I said, share about yourself. No, there yeah, she is. She's turning. <laughs> she went behind my chat box. Now we put her on the spot. Yeah. Um, how many of you, I mean, I know Kathy, you said you wanted to retire. Jenny, you, I don't know if you were joking or not that you wanted to retire. Um, who else is, is succession planning something you're thinking about? I am within the next four to five years. Okay. Which I know that's a long span compared to some of them that are getting ready now, but I just turned 60 and um, it's in my future. Okay. But then again, as I know, Kathy knows, Who's going to take over and make it succeed? <laughs> Who am I going to turn it over to that will take care of it? We've worked all this time of building it up. <laughs> yeah. That scares me because right before I came, they were about to um, turn it over to another library. They were going to give Pleasanton control of Prescott. And Wendy told me she was going to close it. So <gasps> I'm so scared that when I leave, it, it will, um, it might die. And I, I can't let that happen. So that's bothering me. And I know Kathy, you probably are too. Mm -hmm. hmm. So it sounds like recruitment. Yeah. You know, not just Which the- Which is hard though. Yeah. We pay such good wages. That's- <laughs> We're not in it for the money. That's everybody knows that. Please that's come to this charming community and, and yeah. yeah. That's another no, thing with this. I'm it's sorry, not a charming community. <laughs> <laughs> that's another topic with the small community library, solo librarians. We're doing all of this. We have to still do the same thing all the other big libraries are doing, only in a smaller, smaller version, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, but yet we get a fraction of the wage. Uh, most of them don't get any sick time, no vacation time, no benefits, no capers, no, uh, none of that. Um, so that's kind of disheartening too. So you oh. really do have to be in it to want it. Like, yeah. like she was saying, uh, it's your baby and you want it to succeed. Otherwise, I don't think anybody would be here. When I started 22 years ago, they could not find a librarian, and I was um, only seeking part-time, not even really seeking. I was home with a ill child at the time that uh, had a lot of medical needs, and that after the fourth time of being asked, would I take over the library just until they found somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> You're still waiting, well, sure. huh? Sure, I'll help you out after the fourth time of asking. Well, it's 22 years later. They didn't look after I got there. Well, are you guys familiar with the standards, the state standards? Hmm? Okay, because I think they are tiered, but it, mm -hmm. uh, um, 
but I, I, I feel your pain, you know, there's an expectation of the same level of service. You know, if Johnson County can do it, why can't Savinberg? Well, Public's not familiar with the standards, right? Well, yeah. So, well, and they, their expectations, well, and yeah, right. you know, whose expectations? So, I mean, exactly. as SEK, I need to be aware that, that we're not putting on undue, unfair. I mean, it sounds like inequitable and unfair, uh, which is a problem. Can you, yeah, can you put on that inequitable, unfair, that continuing impl implementation grant money thing? Um, some, some librarians can do it for their staff. And if it's something I'm learning in a workshop, it has to be something I can pretty much teach to the public. And mm -hmm. there have not been a lot of opportunities. I think I succeeded checking that box, oh, four years ago. Oh, the, the implementation plan? Where you yeah. just get continuing education? No, on the allocation where you get another percentage if you do this the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've been we've been pushing that out, and I've what we have two, two new people that have been doing it. So yeah. um, I think Kathy's saying that the issue is um, she's wanting to learn something from us that she can put back out to the public, rather than just utilizing in her library and taking up her time. Is that what you're saying, Kathy? Yeah, I didn't know there was another option. I thought I had to teach something to somebody else. No, it can be for, it can be, you learn, so like seed library, uh, you learn about the seed library, then you implement a seed library in your, in, in your, or um, in your library, then that you've implemented something you learned in CE. Um, so yeah, like if you wanted, if you wanted to plan a plant swap, and you come on Monday to the seed library discussion, then within six months. Uh, um, yes. After, yeah, then it would, that could, you could qualify and check that off on your allocation. After you've filled out this implement, see, this is the part And consulted with your consultant, yeah. You have to jump That part's important. Yeah. That's more important than the paperwork, but. So, for example, I uh, genreified my, my children's books and I, that really wasn't a workshop thing. That was just a committee meeting with Tammy and a couple other libraries, but talk about hours of work, you know? Yeah, that should have counted. And um, the way things are written right now, it all, it all has to be premeditated. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess one of the things we need to do as SEK is to make sure that we are saying, here's some, implementation plans that you are, you know, here's some implementation, implementation projects that you might consider in response to this workshop that you just took. Okay. Right. So that's on us. Yeah. So then we can be pushing it and reminding you guys of the timing of it. Yeah. We have a lot of things where the, the language isn't quite clear and the, sometimes the hoop doesn't even make sense. So we'll work towards making that better so that it's more beneficial to you benefit outweighing the that labor there well and just easier i don't know i just, we want to give you money <laughs> that is our goal um, yeah I, I i would like to use up all that money um and i would like to make things simple and i like that about uh you uh, amy and sharon that because i've always kind of come away with the impression in the past it's like well we don't have any money but we got money but it's our money and you're going to have to fight for this money <laughs> it's <laughs> it's yours that sounds rough it's yours. but <laughs> it's yours. It's not mine. we we just want to see that you're going to be uh able to effectively use it to benefit your community through your library yeah and i know that's what it's there for but i mean you guys are putting that out there <laughs> to yeah. where in the past i don't feel like it was put out that way it's a different philosophy. I mean, I just, I, I, I have a different philosophy about money. I'm, I'm not, um, I don't, how do I put this? I think there's, there's always going to be enough. I'm, I'm, I, that's my outlook in life is that there's always going to be enough. Um, uh, and so I'm, I just, ex, I just expect abundance. That's another thing. That's another thing on all the uh, 
education and training things that we want to attend and go so forth, but also the small libraries putting out the expense of paying a sub, paying the librarian to go, paying the mileage. Mm. I love the Zoom. I've been able to attend almost all of them that way. Uh, even on my own, like today, it's, I'm my day off. I'm just doing it on my own time. But um, I really like having the Zoom ones and it helps the library budget a lot. Good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're still considering maybe the seek and finds in person. Um, but other than that, just the annual meeting and the fall in service as our big in person events. Because um, Zoom's effective. I know not everybody it's likes accessible. it. Yeah, I mean, there's some that just don't like it at all. And so there's sort of a, a learn and learn not divide that's happening a little bit, but um, we'll figure it out. Hi, Sharon. I was about to bring attention to you, Miss Sharon. Everybody did introductions. Can you tell us about yourself before we wrap this up? Oh, unmute. Hit your hit your mute button. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I've been okay. here two years since uh, in St. Paul, where I was a food service director before that, and I'm just busy cleaning out and. Amy and Tammy helped me um, weed, and I'm just busy getting those books out and getting ready to sell those and then buy some new books and updating our programming stuff and hoping to do more with that this summer. Cool. I had a question. Oh, Apple. Um, so invitations just went out to the, the seven, uh, the new Apple people. Can you tell who's, who's gonna be in the new Apple? <laughs> um, and so one of the ideas I had that I ran, I ran by Amy was, do we want to have- Just remembering. Before, like in that first week in April before Apple starts, get together past students and you guys can, can share your wisdom and lessons learned and expectations for being a part of Apple um, to the next, the next class. Is that something you guys would be interested in? Let them pick pick your brain. Okay. Cool. Bonnie, you're in it right now, aren't you? I still don't know the eight that we have in it. Yeah. No, I did it a couple years ago. Okay. okay. I Kara so much. Kara Hale is in it. Yeah, Kara's in it. Jenny, did you you liked it? Oh man, I learned so so much. It really helped me a lot. Yeah. And that's when you were at Mound City in the larger library, right? Um, or was it when you were still? I, I was at both. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. Awesome. When you were um, talking earlier about maybe having a system sub for areas and so forth, I have brought up in the past, some time back, of, you know, having programs and having someone there to do a program and plan a program on and on about how small librarians, it can be a burden coming up and doing all that yourself. Okay, this I said, okay, what if the system would have a program presenter and that program presenter would go around once a month to each library and do just a once a month program even. So they could do the same program at each library. <laughs> they could do the same, a, a kid, a, the children's, whatever. Um, the same program, they don't have to plan a new one for each library and go from library to library doing their program. Well, along with that, cause I'm thinking, sorry, my nose is just, um, I'm thinking of, uh, We've got a couple of people at Southwind Extension. Um, but it sounds like what you, the smallest libraries need help with the coordination of that. Mm. So like not, you know, um, that's a really good, I, that's, that's a good idea. Thanks, and that's Sharon. something that- I mean, there, there is Southwind and they do have programs and, and we try to take advantage of them, but um, during COVID, it, it, we haven't been able to. Yeah. Uh, we're getting ready to have one next month for adults, but um, even story times, 
once a month story time, you know? Yeah, like a traveling. Yeah. Um, I like that idea. And so the one of the questions that Tammy and I have been grappling with is the performer, the summer reading performer that used to go from library to library, library, hasn't been for a couple of years. Um, which do you prefer, the money or the performer? Hmm. <laughs> Just think about it. Just think about it. Um, because that's that's something that we're wondering about as well. Or maybe it's an, an either or and or you know, the smaller the libraries get the performer and the larger libraries who have the staff to organize it themselves get the money. Unless a smaller library wants the money. Deanne, are you saying something? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think I would rather have the money. I I, I don't know what I'm doing yet for programming. Again, this is going to be my first summer reading program. So definitely overwhelmed in regards to that, but I'm super excited. So pull out that manual. Uh, oh, I think... Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. No, you go ahead, Kathy. <laughs> I was just thinking though that the when we have had the, the SEKLS performer, I mean, it's kind of a bargain rate. We get a better quality performer than we could if we just had the say $200, $250 ourselves because SEK is paying the mileage and coordinating it and getting you know two or three programs in one day. And uh, I don't think if you gave us say the 250 bucks that we could go out necessarily and get as much programming as the individual. So there's, there's two sides to it. Well, I mean, and if you're crafty, like Jenny, I'm guessing you probably do a lot of like hands-on arts and crafts stuff with the kids. If you were given that money and you already have that as something you like to do, then you could, that's a lot of supplies. Um, so, and, you know, maybe we need both. Maybe, maybe we just need to figure out lots of different options for, for programming. Uh, Cause that is one thing as, as the libraries get just a bump bigger than you guys, we have enough money to hire people to come in. So we can outsource uh, some of that work and have just a few where we have to worry about, okay, I have to plan and I have to go buy all the crafts and I have to cut out all the stuff, you know, the, the time commitment um, where one, if you get that little, that little bump in money, then you can go, oh, I'm just going to hire this magician to come in and we'll have this big thing and I don't got to worry about it. Um, but yeah, and then trying to find partnerships, you know, 4-H can, I mean, the extension does kids programs, I think, mm -hmm. don't they? Yeah. It should, and, you know, all of, all of those extensions are connected to a 4-H um, group or multiple 4-H groups, and um, those oh, kids have love coming to share about their stuff, you bring know. Bring their goat. The, you know, bring your big rubber made con container full of worms and teach us about vermiculture, you know, and or come and bring your robot stuff and teach us about that. Um, yeah, I did. I, I, I had really enjoyed the 4 H kids. No, and, and I, I did that in Tonganoxie, uh, and that was some of the fun, fun programs. Um, but yeah, when I have actually called our extension office. I have only been successful to get them come to a program at my library twice on food mm -hmm. and really? just, oh, we're just booked up, you know, and I, I thought I was calling fairly early. But... It's almost a year in advance you have to call. Yeah. Oh, so my goodness. It's, it's not easy. Wow. Because we had the come... kids. Pro... I'm sorry. I didn't want to talk over you. Um, and and it, the kids things they have to offer is like a cooking class. And they usually coordinate that in our area through the school and mm. uh, have them, although they meet in our community center, it's all done through the school and then through the summer. And it's usually time I'm having summer reading. So then they're at cooking class and don't get to participate in that. But we also compete with summer schools. We have two summer schools. We have swimming classes. We have uh, different ball teams that go out of town to play and, mm -hmm. and on and on. We've all got that problem. Which, you know, it's something to consider is, is then programming not a need. 
you know, is that not a community need that the library needs to supply because other people are supplying it. So then, you know, focus on reading challenges or um, passive programming, maybe. But if we just, if we don't have our summer reading, then we can't get the kids in during the summer. At all. I mean, if we don't have the programs and the things to draw them in, just yeah. like during the school year, they're so involved with all the school reading and school activities that we don't get very many in the winter time. Yeah. Do you guys do um, kickoff and wrap up parties? For we reading. do a wrap up party. We did kickoffs. That was our big thing was to do the kickoff party where you sign up for summer reading and get your bag and get your stuff. And we would bring like one year we we had uh, folks from the Ren Fest come dressed up uh, in Pennsylvania. We had what's the stormtroopers? Uh, the, oh, five, the 501st. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we had we had Darth Vader at the library um, and they do that for free because mm -hmm. uh, they love it. Yeah, well, exactly, because they're geeks and they just want to come dressed up in cosplay. Um, but, you know, so anyway, that might be an idea, too, is just focus on a kickoff and a wrap up and you're done. And just make sure they read during, I mean, if what's the goal? Is the goal to have, well, like your, so your goal was to bring people into the library um, reading challenges where they have to come in every week and get new books or um passive programming or you know uh, bingos and things where they can come in and did you come to the library every week oh good then you get more raffle tickets for the wrap-up party or whatever um so i love a summer reading bingo if you need help make it a bingo card <laughs> just let me know well um, and one of the other interest groups is going to be reader zone yeah oh that's right you can probably do an electronic bingo card through that mm -hmm. I've done a lot of old school. Assuming reading. that young moms have one of these. Yeah. That's another thing that we battled with is the reader zone because it's like, especially, I, and I know that having to do virtual homeschooling kind of put a thing on all that, but um, they're like, if we have to do another program and have to learn another app, this or that, we're done, you know? So you don't have to do it. Yeah. I, it's exhausting. And then I say, I, well, speaking I'll do it as a all. parent, but then the time for me to go in and enter all their stuff in and keep track of all their stuff and put it in reader zone, that was extra I had to do on my own time. So yeah. we just put a close on reader zone for right now. If it, if it doesn't work for you, then it's not useful mm -hmm. for you, you know? Yeah. It was very handy. I mean, it was very, <laughs> uh, you know, to keep, to keep track of your stats and fun mm -hmm. and all that, but. Um, in my first summer reading program, which actually I started working my first library job at the beginning of summer reading, so trial by fire, um, we recorded everyone's reading. They would come to the desk and report, and we had a Microsoft Access database that the children's <laughs> librarian had built. Fun. So that any of us, uh, you know, at any of the desks could put in, uh, you know, what Susie had read this last week. So, you know, we've come a long way, but has, has it improved? I don't know. I don't know. We still did paper in Pennsylvania. You just, you know, how many hours are you going to read? Come in with your little things with the X's and we'd stamp it and you'd get your prize. We did it super, super old school. Okay. Well, you're talking on numbers. I have a quick question. Um, in our state report, you know, it asks uh, the number of patrons. Uh, SEK doesn't require us to turn in a number of patrons. My question in the past has been, uh, like we do family cards to where the whole family has one mm -hmm. card and they love it because everybody don't have to keep track of their cards, mm -hmm. uh, which they don't anyway. But um, so therefore, when you turn in your state numbers, you could have five in a family, but you're only counting one card as one patron to the state. Does that yeah. make sense? <laughs> yeah, um, that's why I think the other thing that it's important for us to count is uh, traffic how many people are coming in. Because if that family of five is coming in, then your door count will yeah. reflect. 
and your circulation statistics because that one family card i mean if if it's if it's like the family 50 I picture have books body, yeah you know, that's 50 75 books a week yeah uh, i guess my question was is it hurting us by only doing a one card or should we have individual no um the other thing to sorry um and we'll talk more about intellectual freedom at um the forum, forum but Having a family card is the best way for concerned parents to legally and without any weirdness on the part of the librarian control what is checked out by their by their children and especially their teen children. Because um, technically, once they have their own card, it can get to be a problem whether or not you know. Uh, that 17 year old is checking out something and mom wants to come in and know what they check out. If it's a family card, it's up to the parent. Um, so yeah, so my, my fundamentalist families, uh, my homeschool families almost always opted for a family card. Yeah. And in, in Huntington Valley was my Orthodox Jewish families. So, you know, if there's, if there's parental concern about what's being read, opt for a family card. So I would, yeah, don't worry about the number part of it. And then you don't have the thing where mom and dads are both, uh, they have too many overdues. And so they use, you know, Johnny's card and then they mess up Johnny's card. And then they're like, oh, well, we have Chrissy. Can we get a card for Chrissy? It's like, you don't have a Chrissy. What do you, is that your dog? You know, so you, got, you, know, you, you have to, um, we all have those families. Mm -hmm. That's one reason why we went to the one card also, and also for videos, because you could have like the family of five and each one of them check out five or more videos and they've got six months worth of videos in their house <laughs> and you may not get them back and they're overdue and da, da, da. So we had to limit the number of uh check out for, for videos only and um, put a, a, a family card that way and go per household on videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and, and when you when you have a small collection, that's something that you definitely have to take into consideration. And we did it, you can only have five videos from us, but if you wanna use Seek and Find, bring in as many as you want. That was my way of circumventing that it's like well we have a limited collection in-house but we're part of a consortium yeah. and then when they don't bring those back and our library is the one paying the consortium back for 15 videos that's our whole year's budget <laughs> that is a consideration i would also recommend y'all look at the set off program as a way to get your money back We, we do that. We use the Kansas set off program, but awesome. then a lot of those families that are doing that, they're on assistance and you cannot uh, withhold from anyone that's on assistance. Oh, I didn't know that. So therefore I had even one lady enlighten me on that uh, a few years back. And she says, well, I'm on assistance and you can't guarantee anything for me. So I'm not worried. So what'd you do? Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I think I just read your list, but yeah. Like, sorry, that's, you don't get to use our library. Yeah, that's uh, when uh, we did never did get our money out of her. Uh, but that's when we went down to the two per household. You can come in as many times as you want per day to get those, but two checkouts per time. You can come in 10 times if you want, but two per checkout. Two, yeah, to mitigate risk. And again, that's when they DVDs were selling for like $20, $25 a piece. And so that did add up quickly when they had a stack. Now you can get them cheaper. Mm -hmm. We don't do as many DVDs anymore. We've got more people using the Hoopla. And, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of them have, um, you know, Netflix or something at home anyway. Yeah, we, well, and... Um... Music CDs. We were doing music CDs, and we just decided because of lack of use, 
you know, if people have memorials that they want, we'll buy and we'll buy the now that's what I call music or, you know, one of those it's kind of uh, music CDs, but that's not a collection that we're going to cultivate anymore. It doesn't get used. So, we know. did away with our music CDs uh, altogether. Um, and like Kathy was saying, we are not on a hoopla. Our library is not, but our CD collection has really dropped of checkouts because everyone has Netflix and Amazon Prime and all that now. Well, and SEKLS is still providing support for Hoopla. I know Roger said the money was going to go away two years ago, but it didn't. Really. Sorry, my nose just, but it didn't really. So. I mean, it's not going to get supported forever. And the other thing that y'all small but mighty, <laughs> um, the reduction in courier fees is going away. The courier fees were you were getting special pricing because of COVID. And Henry Industries is not only um, bringing the pricing back to what it was, they are going to be raising prices because they're having the same issues as everybody else trying to get employees and drivers and cost of doing business. And if we, you know, if there's war with Russia, which kind of already is happening, gas prices are going to go up. And so that's going to impact the career. Uh, so just something to keep in mind for 2023. And I'll find out on Wednesday at the director's meeting uh, what those prices will be. And then I'll have to figure out what the SEK, uh, what our grant will be for next year. That would be my question. I hate to be the one talking all the time. So just tell me to be quiet if you don't want me to talk. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the career prices, us being the small library too, I have very few that order, that I have to order out for my personal customers, our library. I do send out um, 20 to 30 some for other libraries, uh, bags, not items, mm -hmm. there's more items. But uh, so therefore we're paying for other libraries to use our service on cur for courier. Our library is paying for that. Mm -hmm. To where if I looked at it as, is this a price, a benefit for our patrons? No, because we very seldom use it. Um, so therefore, if you have extra money in the SEK, could that go toward the courier? Because Possibly. we're helping other libraries. Yeah. Well, the other thing I just wrote down as you were saying that is, is for some libraries, if your, if your patrons really truly aren't using the service, um, is there a way to be a standalone? Where you're you're not um, you're not part of the the courier, but you're using Koha as a standalone system. I think that's kind of the way Pittsburgh, um, Girard, Eureka are. Um, you were told we had to be. Well, right now you do. I mean, that's the way um, so you can find his setup. But you know. Just because we've always done it that way doesn't mean we have to continue to do it that way. Um, I'll look into that, but yeah, that's a good, um, I don't know that loaning, net loaning versus net borrowing is even taken into consideration in the courier fees. Um, I know that if you have a high volume, you have to pay extra, you know? So if, if you're a super user, then yeah, you have to, you get, um, you have to pay more. Um, but if you are the opposite, <laughs> thank you, Lee. Thanks for coming in. Um, you know, a barely user, and it would actually, you know, uh, the uh, the cost of using the couriers is is still much less than using mail. Yeah, even but at you would the media really, rates. Yeah, but you would really need to see. You know, if you're not using the courier enough to make it, to justify it. I don't know, something I have to think about, Diane. Just to be funny, I told Jason one time that we were a loan shark because we had lent more that year <laughs> than we had borrowed. <laughs> and then, you know, 
uh, we had these same discussions when I was at NEK, you know, at the, the little libraries feeling put upon. And there is, it's an unfair burden because the, um, the percentage of your budget that goes, if you have a budget for books, um, is greater kind of than the bigger libraries. You also can promote Seek and Find a little bit more too and get your people to use it. Mm -hmm. We've, I've done a couple sessions on that and it's, it's made a difference. I could make Jason be that program that goes from library to library to library. He'd <laughs> yes. love that. Use our OPAC. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did one that was called Mom's Night Out and I taught, it was primarily homeschool moms, but how to use Seek and Find, how to get more out of the state library card and they wanted to know how much it costs to get a state library card. I mean, it's it's Free. just, it's, I know I said it's already paid for. You paid for it with your taxes. Yeah. So you need to use it to get your money's worth. Yeah. But, um, a and lot did, of that, it was successful. Cool. I like that. I need to do another one. I think well, that friends, needs to go in the next newsletter. <laughs> we, we've been here for an hour and a half. And I thought that, we wouldn't even make it a half hour before everybody decided they didn't have anything to talk about. But we're, we're gonna have to wrap it up because I value your time. Deanne has made so many notes. I'm so glad, maybe you, maybe you send those to me. Oh, Bonnie has a question before we go. No, I have um, some good news. We received word a week ago that Weir Library got an ALA grant for humanities in the amount of $10,000. Yay! I thought and you guys had to split that. So each of those libraries got $10,000? 200 libraries got $10,000 each. And three in SEK got it, because you got yeah. it. Mm -hmm. the other Taney year. and was it Taney? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And it was really interesting. In the press release, it even mentions where it says, was talking about the diversity of libraries. And they said, we're Kansas population 642 to Los Angeles. Can you send us a of the press release? Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bonnie, also shoot me an email with, with some details on uh, what y'all are planning to do and all of that. And yeah. we'll put that in the newsletter. Yeah, yeah. we're humanities. It's you know got to be kind of cultural type things. And mm -hmm. we're establishing a family history nook. Because <laughs> as small as our library is, it's not going to be a center. It's a little nook. And then we're actually getting to use part of that money for the big campus oh, okay. for the giveaways and the activities. Perfect. Yeah. So yes, okay. I'll send the press release and what our plans are. Thank you. Hey, congratulations. And we're already spending. It was deposited <laughs> yesterday and I ordered <laughs> things last night. So see it, abundance. Exactly. The money's out there. We just got to find it. Thank you everybody for coming. I'm gonna uh, send you a recording and some notes. Um, it's, it's gonna be a minute because I'm gonna go back through and make some of those notes from the recording. Um, but uh, when I send you that, I'm also gonna send you a link to a when is good uh, to try and get an idea of when we should have our meeting in March. Um, March is, for me, a little bit of a crazy month. Um, so, so we're, <laughs> we're gonna do it that way um, for this next one uh, before we figure out whether we have a regular time or if it varies depending on when people can get here, okay? Um, again, thank you so much for coming. It's so good to see all of your faces and we will talk again soon. Thank you. You're welcome. You guys are awesome. Small but mighty. Keep it going. Yes, thank you. Oh, I guess we need to stop the recording. <laughs>